report the news that nobody has the balls to report. Why am I the only one breaking stories like this? Stop saying them, but I'm not. I'm never gonna stop. Now, these are the kind of stories, guys, that must be told. I'm just a guy who's breaking stories and reporting news from my basement. Oh, hello, Turtle Riders, and welcome to the Turtle Boy Live Toxic Alt Right Online. What was it, Deb? What was the rest of it? Toxic. Oh, all right. Sex cult vlog. Yeah, this is the welcome to the sex cult, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you guys noticed this, where we've we've started a sex cult. I am your head goblin, the sex goblin. I'm your <laughs> host, Uncle Turtle Boy. We will be paving paths of destruction tonight, folks, because ding dong, the witch is dead. We're here to celebrate the destruction of Monica Cannon. Granted, it's a great day in Turtle Boy history. Let me tell you that much. Oakley Doakley. So anyway, guys, I went ahead and I shared the link to the stream on the various social media pages that we run. Uh, my personal account is called Clarence with Emerson. Uh, you can also find me at Turtle Boy Sports. Uh, you can also find me at Uncle Turtle Boy. I'm all over Facebook. They're letting us stay up. So go and follow those pages, like and interact with the post as much as possible. It's getting kind of fun over there. Might get to 100,000 again. You never know. Also, follow me on Twitter. I picked up like 200 Twitter followers today. That's pretty cool. At Dr. Turtle Boy. That's D-O-C-T-O-R Turtle Boy. Because if Jill Biden is a doctor, then so am I. You can also follow me at Turtle Boy Phone because I got to have two accounts because you never know when Twitter is going to take me off of there. So uh, we're also on Instagram at Turtle Boy underscore daily underscore news and uh yeah we're good oakley doakley folks so uh obviously today is a big day uh we're going to be getting to the indictment in one moment i would like to remind you guys if you guys like this kind of journalism you know uh renegade independent journalism uh we would graciously appreciate any and all donations we are banned from using the Unfortunately, we're banned from using the super chat monetization aspect of YouTube because we had the wrong opinions about the climax. We can't even say the right word, but it kind of sounds like climax, the climax scene. Yeah, uh, we had the wrong opinions about that. So we're banned from monetizing this. So we went ahead and we built our own little super chat thing. It's called Turtle Chat. It's pinned to the top. Oh, we already got a couple donuts. So how this works is if you guys like the um if you guys would you know like to donate to the program you can write uh you can click on that thing at the top it's called turtle chat and then you can donate whatever amount of money you want and when you do it you get to write a nice little message and i will get an email notification like this and i will bring them up periodically throughout the show so the first one is from suzanne who says uh fifty dollars for the first bottle of champagne thank you very much Suzanne, because we're going to celebrate tonight also timothy just sends 25 dollars. he has no message uh, but we graciously appreciate that anyway. So if you guys would like to, uh, you know, do your own turtle chat, you can write whatever you want to give a big shout out to whoever. Personally, uh, today was a very awesome day for me. Uh, it was a very fulfilling day for me. Uh, not only because it was so awesome to see Monica Cran and Grant finally get it, finally get what she, she deserved it. It's so satisfying to see that. Uh, but also because it's like a reminder to all the losers out there. And all the butthurts and all the deadbeat shitty parents who lost their kids to DCF and the disgraced state troopers uh, who, you know, can't get enough of this. Obviously, they're a little obsessed or, you know, who else is out there? You, you name it. You know, uh, you know, lonely housewives who run Royal Thermal View and live in Oxbridge. People like that out there, losers, freaking losers that have been spending the last couple months trying to destroy me, trying to mess with my psyche, trying to fuck with my head, announcing that Turtle Boy's done, Turtle Boy's this, he's gone, he's not the same as he was. How do, how do you like them apples? You were pretty quiet today, weren't you all, huh? Because this is what we do. I live 
I live for days like today. This is why I wake up every morning and do what I do. This is why I started Turtle Boy eight years ago and stuck through all the bullshit. This is why I deal with all these freaking uh, lawsuits and all these people threatening me and all these people who think they could take you down. Where you at? All you people who jumped off the turtle and ran to those fucking losers, you never allow back here. We don't want you back here because this is what we do. Well, you're over there reading screenshots of my conversations for a year ago and you think i actually give a fuck about it i don't because i'm over here breaking stories and putting bad guys in jail huh so i win you lose and today was a great day for turtle boy a great day for turtle boy so anyway how you doing deb doing great how are you i'm good thank you i'm good thank you so uh in case you guys so i woke up this morning and I, I got, I got a text. I, I think the first one came in around eight o'clock. It was from Suzanne. And she's like, Monica can grants getting, uh, got indicted and was arrested and she sends me a link. And then I got like a hundred messages all day. And, and it was the awesomest day ever. It was so satisfying to hear that. The best part about today for me was just going on social media and every time WBZ or the Boston Globe or Boston.com or whatever would post a story about it. What what do y'all you saw in the comments were? What? Oh, Dad be killing me. Uh no, wait, <laughs> were you on? <laughs> there it is. I was replying to somebody. I'm like crap. Okay. So there it is. All I saw on Facebook all day today in the comments turtle section, emojis. all these pages was turtle emojis everywhere. And it's like it's a reminder that even though the mainstream media ignores you. And they pretend you don't exist and, you know, because they think they're too good for you or whatever. On a day like today, it's a reminder that everybody knows. Everybody knows whose story this is. Everybody knows who's been exposing this piece of trash for the last two years straight. And it was all worth it for a day like today. There was a time when I never thought this. I never thought, guys, that this day would come. I never thought that Monica Cannon Grant was actually going to, because we live in communist Massachusetts. She's too protected. She's a member of several marginalized identity groups. So she was off limits and she knew it, but you know what? I just didn't stop. I didn't stop. We didn't stop. Really didn't stop. Uh, I never gave up on this woman. I got the, the city of Boston tried to play games with me with that freedom of information act. Uh, I requested and I found out, like about seven or eight months ago that she got that $54,000 check from the city. I got it all. So we're going to have a good time tonight. So Deb, if you could do me the honors, could you bring up the indictment for me, please, of Monica and okay. Grants? Thank you. Absolutely. So we got a nice crowd here tonight, folks. Nice crowd. Love it. Share the link. Get as many riders. Yes, also I'm Cash App. If you guys are on um, Cash App, uh, my, uh, name is dollar sign uncle turtle boy. So you can get at me at there. I will get a notification as well. Okay. So you're gonna have to zoom in so we can see it even more, but get it like big screen there. Okay. All right. So let's go down to uh page. What is page two? Let's just start from the top. Okay. So defendant, uh, Monica Cannon grant, blah, blah, blah was a resident of Boston and uh, formed in, so the company was formed in 2017, blah, 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 to do stuff it didn't do. The, it starts off with the bang, page two. In vo violence in Boston payroll, she began issuing herself weekly starting in October of 2020, uh, almost $3,000 a week. She paid herself $170,000 a year. That's insane. That's a woman with no college education, no background in nonprofit management, nothing. Like, what has she done to earn that type of salary? Who is she to earn that type of salary? But the nonprofits, man, you just pay yourself whatever you want. Nonprofits are the greatest liberal grift of all time. It's a way for untalented, unhirable losers to get jobs and make themselves feel important. Like, the, like, what would Monica Cannon Grant do? What will she do in the future? Because she can't do this again. This is over. I mean, she working at Arby's. What's she going to do? She's going to have to figure that out. The, gr the gravy train's over, baby. It's over. So we go down there. And it says uh, number two there. And thank you. Daniel sends $20. And he says, for Emily Nieves, killer is next. Absolutely. 
that's another one we're really going to go after the degree family. Now that Monica's out of the picture. Anyway, uh, defendant Clark was a resident of Boston, blah, blah, blah. He was a full-time employee for the commuter service company starting in 2018. He was initially hired as a track laborer from 2018 to 2021. He was a full-time employee there. Um, and he made salaries, you know, basically like a teacher salary from 2017 to 21 Clark and, uh, Monica through violence in Boston started fundraising and solicited over a million dollars in donations and grants from individuals, charitable institutions, and other entities. Now for us guys, this is no surprise, right? Because if you saw, uh, let me bring it up here. Violence in Boston part one. I did an expose and I'm going to put this in the comments and you guys can kind of read this on your own if you'd like, but this is nothing new to me. So this was on July, what, July 20th. I wrote this blog okay. and I broke down all of her things, like all of the, the payments that she received uh, by simply going on her page real quick. Uh, Deb, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to show you guys this uh, link that I have here. If you didn't read this blog, go and read it. Because this is uh, this was a uh, an expose I did on all the money that was coming into her. Now, we've all heard her stupid rant about Rayla Campbell, which is honestly being overlooked in all this. Like, It's kind of funny that the Boston Globe and all these media outlets, they don't care about racism, violence, anything like that. But they do care about one thing. And it's not money. They didn't care about the money with Monica Cannon Grant. They care about the embarrassment. That's all they care about. She embarrassed the Democratic Party. That was her biggest mistake. She became an ambassador for the left. She was rolling with some big people, Joe Kennedy, Marty Walsh, Michelle Wu, you name it. Any leftist politician had to kiss her ass in order to get, like her endorsement was actually courted. That's the craziest part about this. She was valuable to them. And then... She became an embarrassment and she became a liability. And, you know, this video had a lot to do with it. In us showing up on September 7th, 2020, at Violence in Boston opening and protesting that and disrupting it and causing a scene and then showing up three weeks later at the Roxbury Police Department, Boston headquarters. That made it, that embarrassed them. That embarrassed people like Rachel Rollins, who had to distance themselves. People like Lydia Edwards, who had to distance themselves. Some of them stuck around. Tito Jackson, he needs to be the next one handcuffs, by the way. Tito Jackson was all in on this. I hope to God he sold her out, too. That would be freaking hilarious if he did that. But I digress, as Monica says. Anyway, this whole video with her you know, threatening to blow someone's head off, Rayla Campbell's, didn't even seem to matter to them that much, apparently. Not as much as embarrassing them. And so I went through this whole thing. I explained where their nonprofit, how it was like not, you know, who the officers were. And this woman came up, Zaina Merchant. She was a school committee member from Winchester and she was a treasurer and she knew a lot about this kind of stuff. And she, as the treasurer, you're really supposed to be in charge of the money. But as we're going to see in this indictment, she didn't touch the money. All the money went through Monica. All this woman was, was one thing. She was the white face. That's what she was. She was Monica's bridge to suburban respectability. That's all this woman was to her. She used her. And this freaking moron, well, they used each other. Because Zaina Merchant is obviously a communist. And she probably gets off to the idea of like, oh my God, a black person likes me. Oh my God, Monica, make, we had a black person over for dinner. None of my friends have ever had a black person over for dinner. We're so, we're so progressive in this house. Look at, we practice what we preach. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She probably felt so good about herself. When Monica's had her house raided in October, Zayna Merchant fell off the board real quick. And I'm pretty sure she ratted her out. I'm willing to bet she ratted her ass out. So, uh, you know, here's another th Alex Goldstein. This is another guy. I, I want to go back through this now that this has officially become, she's officially become cancerous. And I want to make sure every single person who is associated with her pays the price for this. Alex Goldstein, he's associated with the uh, Ayanna Presley campaign. He was like their spokesperson. All shit went through him. So anyway, we look up uh, on the attorney general's thing and we see that they are listed on the IRS website, 
IRS website as a tax exempt organization, but they never did their paperwork. After we wrote this blog, they went and did their taxes for 2017, 2018, and I believe 2019, but not 2020, which was the real big year. And they list all their partners on here. Tito Jackson, Marty Walsh. You know, this is how they became legitimate. Um, they claim to help people facing police brutality in Roxbury over in 40 families who lost loved, loved ones to homicide. It's called violence in Boston. It's supposed to be working to prevent violence in Boston. It did none of that. It was basically a, a slush fund for Monica Cannon Grant for her own personal use. And occasionally, guys, she would go to BJ's and, and take a picture of herself, buy a mac and cheese. And then she'd like, look at I'm feeding the homeless. I'm feeding the poor. I'm feeding black people. I'm good. I'm a good, even though I'm in Hyde Park where like, you know, down near freaking Milton where pretty much there are no black people. It's barely Boston down here. But by the way, in case anyone's wondering, like I had to go through fucking Dedham. I didn't even touch Boston when I went to head, you know, Hyde Park headquarters there. Anyway, it goes on. So she's got this PayPal button on there and it says that's a violence in Boston PayPal. And I went through it and uh, by my calculations, like these are all the places that donated to her. And this was the big year, 2020, June of 2020. That was the year the patron saint um, of fentanyl there, George Floyd, was killed in Minneapolis. And that was the best thing that ever happened to a lot of people in this country particularly people like Monica Cannon Grant because people done lost their minds in June of 2020. People lost their freaking minds. I don't know if it was the pandemic or what, but prior to that Black Lives Matter when they first came around with Michael Brown, never really got too mainstream. But in June of 2020, when that happened and it was just so trans, like it was so obvious that what Derek Chauvin did was wrong. And it was just, it was all, it was the worst look possible. Like, let's be honest. And even though he was arrested and so were the three other cops and charged and he's, you know, within 10 months, he's spending basically the next 25 years in prison. So justice was served. People like Monica Cannon Grant still pretended like, you know, this is happening all the time. Right. And white people felt so bad looking at that shit. Even moderates, people who didn't normally support it. Goddamn Mitt freaking Romney. Mitt Romney was out there doing that. We had Republican senators proposing police reform bills and shit. We had people getting banned from restaurants in Swampscott, selectmen that were getting kicked out of restaurants because they were overheard by a waiter saying, man, Black Lives Matter, they're a bunch of liberal, it's, it's a bunch of liberal assholes banned from restaurants. You could not possibly say anything about them. And this was cash money for people like Monica Cannon Grant. And so you see all these organizations that donated to her, that affiliated with her. Elizabeth Warren, at, right after you know June 2020. Elizabeth Warren. Ayanna Presley, who she campaigned for. All these companies, right? All these foundations. Look at all these found, And that's all these nonprofits are. Nonprofits are just organizations that make their money off of donations from multi-million dollar foundations owned by rich white people who are looking for some pet charity to donate to so they feel better about themselves. That's all nonprofits are. Anyway, so it goes on. Uh, there's all these people. Take a look at it sometime. Take a look at I mean, look at all these people who donate. And she could, we know this because she posted about it. She posted about all these people. Juneteenth, thank you for all this whatever. Thank everybody. Oh, you're so kind. Thanks for all the cash. Lyft, thank you, Lyft. <laughs> Uh, what do we got here? Um, relief for black lives. Uh, the bar foundation gave $70,000 to her $35,000 from Nike. She got, I mean, insane, absolutely insane. She got politicians gave her Joe Kennedy, Liz Miranda. Well, she has some interesting things to say on social media. Uh, how about this? And this is what I mean by moderates. City Councilor Anissa Asabi George, one of the weakest candidates to ever run for any office, couldn't even beat Michelle Wu, got killed by her. Because this is the kind of shit she does, like gives money to Monica Cannon Grant. 
That's how gutless she is. She's like, well, I guess I have to give to her, right? She she seems like a leader. I guess I have to give to her. And you would share her PayPal all the time. Just cash. I mean, she showed it right on her page. All this money coming in. We're and this is back in 2018. We're almost there. I have 2,900 friends. If we each donate ten dollars, we will reach our goal. And so eight thousand dollars here, ten grand here. All this money was coming in, like, and none of it, none of it was in the taxes. Nothing. We were screaming about this. I sent this to the Boston Globe, who did more to build her up than anybody. They're the most responsible in all this. Without the Boston Globe, Monica Cannon Grant, nobody knows who she is. They made her into that. And I said this when I was on Howie today. Fake news is not just lying and misreporting things. Fake news is when you choose not to report certain news because it goes against your agenda. And that's what that's why the Boston Globe is fake news because they knew this was happening. I sent this to them. The Didi Delgado already started a feed Monica's kids PayPal. That's over twelve hundred. I saw that. Of course, of course. But that twelve hundred dollars ain't going to get her very far. Okay. So you know she's got all these organizations on here. How about this one? She also used the reparations card. July fourth, she asked for ninety dollars in reparations. And it went to her Monica Cannon Grant account, not her violence in Boston one. And people actually give it to him. And remember, how about these ones? The fake ones. She would always come up with some, and none of this is in the indictment, by the way. Maybe that should be. A black queer person in need of $250 to pay taxes. Uh, spoiler alert, that person doesn't exist. I'm telling you that doesn't exist. Four unnamed black students want to go to the prom. Hmm. Yeah, sure they do. Right. Imagine that. Like, I can't go to the prom without Monica Cannon Grant raising money for me. Come on. Stop it. Dome domestic violence survivor needs $400. A black femme. <laughs> okay. Looking for a five bedroom for $3,500 for some family. Oh, right, right, right. Sure. Zaina Merchant. Getting a freaking uh, dining room table set for her for Thanksgiving. I mean, look at all this cash coming in. We documented this. And remember Dave Anelman from the um, Phantom Gourmet who had some uh, comments on social media. This is what I mean by the world went crazy in 20. Like they were the most harmless comments. He's like, well, since we're allowed to riot in the streets, can we maybe open up the restaurants again? That's racist. You don't like black people. That was the culture in June of 2020. America's never lost its mind like June of 2020. And because of that, Monica saw that. It's like, oh, a white guy in trouble? Cash money. Cash money. So she starts posting about it. And it's like, y'all better donate to me. And they did. Of course they did. Because they're freaking morons. So, you know, we looked into this. And then we found um, that, let's see. She does occasionally post about the amount that comes in in grant money. And so she'd post some grants here. $35,000 in grants. Like, what's that, what's that about? And how about this one? This was in the indictment. My view until Friday, grateful to have, this is on June 24th of 2019, she posted this, to have my husband, Clark Grant, who recognizes when I need a rejuvenating rest in a team that understands the seriousness of self-care. I will not be responding to any work or community-related texts or inboxes. It is important. Contact my husband alone in a room. It's just me. So she went to some expensive spot where we're going to see that cost $1,200 to stay there, 1200 bucks. And occasionally she would retweet something about like someone getting shot and she'd call it a, uh, you know, she would call it a, a, a good thing. What are the abortions she spoke of? That's a good point. If you recall in the violence in Boston promo video, Monica said that she got $6,000 from Rachel Rollins that she spent on abortions, which to me was appalling because it's like, wait, wait, regardless of your stance on abortions, why are not or the that's what Rachel Rollins is spending our tax money on? What? That's insane. As it turns out, that's not even true. She went to the nail salon. So can we bring the indictment back up there? Thank you. And remember, guys, to hit that like button. If you're new here, please smash the subscribe button too and hit the notification bell. We are here every Tuesday and Saturday night at 9 p.m. on Thursdays. We do a thing called Turtle Club for $15 a month. You can join. You get ad-free. You get access to the Thursday night stream. You get a free T-shirt upon request. 
and you are supporting turtle, you know, turtle boy and jur independent journalism and doing so. Okay. So back here and that's uh, linked in the, uh, in the stream. All right. So back to uh, our situation here. So they, uh, they fundraised, they solicited over a million dollars, which we already knew. The bulk of the monies were donated into their uh, bank account in North Carolina. They also had a, a PayPal account. And although a VIB had a treasurer and other directors, they were the only ones with access to those accounts, which is freaking hilarious. They had no physical location until 2020. And it was based out of her residences one and two. After incorporating in November as a nonprofit, VIB was required to file tax forms, among other things. The Mass AGO's office disclosed that VIB's yearly revenue and expenses, including any and all compensation to their directors, which they did not do. And then we wrote that blog and they've had to do some of them. During the period uh, from 2017 to 21, both of them um, and others known to the, unknown to the grand jury conspired to defraud VIB donors uh, and grant issuers by using VIB funds to personally enrich them. And we're going to see more of the details below. Let's go to number six there, the VIB wire fraud conspiracy. Okay. So starting in uh, beginning at the, at least as early as 2017, Monica Cannon Grant and Clark um, agreed to use VIB as a vehicle to enrich themselves. They at least presented themselves as uncompensated VIB directors to donors and charitable organizations. And remember, we looked at their taxes and we saw they weren't paying anything out to themselves, they said, in salary. It's like, what? How is that possible? In reality, they had exclusive control over everything and they diverted money to themselves. We're going to see the details. Okay, on to number seven there. The object of the VIB wire fraud conspiracy was for them uh, to use it as a vehicle to solicit and receive charitable donations uh, and pay for personal expenses and blah, 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 blah. Okay, manner and means. Among the manner and means by which they and their co-conspirators uh, carried them out, they falsely represented VIB as a nonprofit that did not pay salaries, okay? They applied for public and privately funded grants to be used for VIB pur purposes that they spent on themselves, they concealed from other VIB directors who have gone, which means, guys, just that part in there concealed with them, that means they spoke to those directors. And those directors were like, they didn't give a shit, basically. They sold, Monica got sold out, which is just extra sweet justice and all this. Thank you, Lord. Um, anyway, so they had nothing to do with it, basically. Number, letter D, concealing from other VIB directors financial bookkeeping, they were secretly uh, cashing and depositing checks to enrich themselves, making thousands in cash withdrawals and filing false reports with the AGO that concealed the fact that they were receiving income. I mean, this is the worst, the worst fraud possible. And by the way, the most juvenile, the most obvious, it was just out there the whole time. And no, no one in the media was interested in the story except for yours truly. All right. Cannon Grant, number nine, applied for and received a... Ten so this is her first act of fraud, early in her days in 2017. A $10,400 grant on behalf of VIB from a department store company based in Massachusetts. In their application, she represented to the department store that the $10,000 grant funds were to purchase meals for needy children in the Boston school system and that no VIB staff received compensation. She had a zero balance in her personal checking account. So that sounds good. You're this department store. You're like, oh yeah, needy kids. Sure. Sounds good. Because they did not have tax exempt nonprofit status at the time, she directed them to issue the $10,000 to a fiscal conduit that had nonprofit tax exempt status, which was located in Charlottesville, Virginia, AKA the VA church. In October, she informed the VA church that VIB Finance of Boston needed the funds to make the food distributions and directed them to issue a check capable, uh, payable to Monica Cannon Grant and mail it to her Boston address number one. They informed her that it received the $10,000 check in the mail from the department store. And a few days later, the VA church issued a check payable to violence in Boston and mailed it to her residence. Cannon Grant cashed the check at a bank in Alpharetta, Georgia on or about October 31st, 2017. She used cash proceeds from the ten thousand uh, dollar church check to purchase three thousand dollars in money orders, 
to pay for her rent arrears at her Boston residence. So she was a little behind in her rent, shocking. And she basically, I mean, imagine how twisted you have to be to say, oh, you know, oh, you give us 10 grand. We're going to feed hungry children. And she's like, gets the money. She's like, get some money order. Nah, psych. I'm going to pay off this rent that I never paid. Oh, psych. And that, and that was her first taste of fraud. And there was no, you know, punishment for it. So why not keep doing it? They never disclosed to other VIB directors or financial bookkeepers um, that they were from uh, the, uh, they did this basically. Uh, other board members and financial auditors cashed several donation checks that were payable, uh, unbeknownst to them, rather. These uh, Monica and Clark cashed a lot of checks, uh, whose headquarters at a Dorchester check cashing business, whose headquarters were based in Illinois, and whose check cashing transactions were processed in interstate commerce. And so th I, they bring that up, guys, because. This is now why the feds are involved because the interstate factor on several occasions, cash deposits were subsequently made to uh, grants personal checking account on another one. He used cash check proceeds to pay for school dues for her children, What her, her kids can't go to public school. Okay. Uh, the DCB transactions included below and they kind of list some of those that they're using, you know, donated money for a mat in May of 19 of 2019. A Massachusetts district attorney's office invited nonprofit organizations. This would be Rachel Rollins, Rachel Rollins, folks, uh, to uh, to apply for community reinvestment grants up to 10 grand that were funded with money from asset forfeiture. So, you know, when 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 they do a drug raid and they catch you, get a bunch of coke and heroin and cash this the, for some reason. Rachel Rollins just gets to hold on to that money and just give it out. She's like the ratchet fairy godmother. Like, ooh, who wants some fentanyl money? Ooh, anybody want 10 grand in fentanyl money? Ooh, let me fill out a form for me and dance and throw as many buzzwords in there. And then you can have the 10 grand in this fentanyl money that people died pay using. <laughs> Monica Cannon Grant basically started, you know, from drug money. That's That's where all this came from. That's the root of it all. So applicants were advised that the grant money was to be used for violence prevention and substance abuse, not to pay for salary, staff time, or food costs, specifically. On or about June 1st, 2019, Cannon Grant booked a hotel reservation for three nights and two rooms at Sonista Suites in Columbia, Maryland, at a cost of $1,200. So that's over $300 a night. <laughs> it gets better. In June. Bank statements showed that she had a closing balance of $1.35 in her check. She's so broke. Oh, she's so broke. That's a theme here. We're going to see in this. They're always broke. Clark Grant had a closing balance of $21 in his checking account. And the VIB bank account had a balance of negative 84. So they really need this grant. On June 6th, she emailed the grant application which certified that the grant funds would be used for a project in September of 2019 in which violence in Boston plans to bring 10 at-risk young men and two young adults from the underserved communities of Roxbury on a three-day violence prevention retreat in Philadelphia. The purpose of this trip is to give these young men exposure to communities outside of the violence-riddled neighborhoods that they navigate daily. During the retreat, we will focus on community building activities, developing coping. So, so she's got this whole business plan when she writes this up. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to bring black kids to Philadelphia and we're going to fix violence there. So that way we can learn how to fix violence in Boston. That, that's the plan. And, you know, you know, Rachel Rollins sees that and it's like, oh, wow, that sounds awesome. Six grand for you, dear. Here you go. Get yourself some abortions. On or about June 28th, 2019, at a ceremony, Monica accepted the grant award to VIB in the form of a $6,000 check. The six grand was deposited into their bank account the same day. In July, the bank account records show Cannon Grant used the six grand to pay for, among other things, $145 at a Boston nail salon. Think of how ratchet you have to be to do that. Over $400 in groceries and Walmart purchases in Columbia, Maryland. Hundreds of dollars in meal costs in Connecticut, New Jersey. How the hell are you spending hundreds of dollars? You drove through Connecticut and you spent hundreds of dollars on food? 
How much spirals can you get, girl? Jesus, they must eat so much. Uh, at the Shake Shack, uh, Bubba, Bubba Gum Shrimp, and other restaurants. $1,200 for the hotel. Hundreds in fuel, parking, and car rental. And hundreds of dollars in ATM withdrawals. Somehow, after getting the $6,000 check, violence in Boston had a negative $552 balance, so they even overspent it. They didn't spend a goddamn dime on anything. It was a lie. None of them showed transactions in Philadelphia, nor did their VIB bank account statement. They never even stepped foot in Philadelphia. They, they, they kind of went by it, but they didn't step foot in it. Explained that the reason she did not respond to uh, emails was that she was on vacation. <laughs> Remember that? She posted it on Facebook too. Hello, I reported that. Neither Cannon Grant nor Clark disclosed that they had used the six grant to pay for the six grand to pay for the July 2019 personal vacation. Uh, they never submitted any paperwork, obviously. Uh, additional fraud on or about August 22nd, a Cambridge Black Lives Matter group, she stole from Black Lives Matter, made a $3,000 donation in support of VIB's program to feed needy children. Two days later, Cannon Grant and Clark Grant transferred those funds via a PayPal amount of $3,400 to a bank account belonging to one of Cannon Grant's family members. Then, on August 28th, the cash withdrawal of $3,400 was made from family members' bank account. They did not inform the other directors that they did this, and the $3,000 donation had been diverted to their family members and withdrawn to cash. So, basically, they stole from Cambridge BLM there, which is awesome. In 2018, they collected donations of approximately $23,000 in PayPal and $25,000 into their bank account, almost 50 grand. The 2018 withdrawals and debits from their bank account largely reflected spending on personal items. The withdrawals of both the grants, $17,000 in withdrawals, reflected spending for cell phone bills, Amazon purchases, meals, gas, auto insurance, Uber, Uber. ATM withdrawals, as well as the purchases at Old Navy, TJ Maxx, the Apple Store, and nail salon charges. The VIB PayPal account records showed a similar pattern with the majority of debits going to pay for meals, gas, car insurance charge uh, at Macy's. AC, Macy's, unbelievable. So she was grifting back in 2018, just spending everything. She collected donations of approximately $91,000 in PayPal donations and $32,000 in the VIB account. And so th this is 2019. She raises $120,000. With respect, there was a total of approximately $54,000 in withdrawals, which includes $6,000 in ATM cash withdrawals, thousands on meals, groceries, Amazon, Uber, and for goods and services from Boston area nail salons, debits. Uh, $38,000 in debits, purchases at the Rent Them Outlet, Polo. Girl went to the Rent Them Outlet. Timberland, Lane Bryant. Isn't that for the, isn't Lane Bryant for the plus size? <laughs> That's fucking funny. They went to the plus size store. Oh my God. She blew all those donations on Moo Moo's. Good Lord. Good Lord. This is so ratchet. Guys, I've never, I've never had a, normally I discourage back. We have ratchet madness coming up next month. And obviously, Monica Cannon Grant is our reigning Ratchet Madness champion. I usually don't put people in the same Ratchet Madness two years in a row. But how can I not? This is so Ratchet. She's she's more... 2022 Monica Cannon Grant is more Ratchet than 2021 Monica Cannon Grant, if that was possible. Goodness gracious. So anyway, back to this. Uh, she received a $500 donation from a different Cambridge group to support the black women and marginalized genders to be a conference to be hosted by VIB that month. Instead of depositing the check, she deposited it into a personal account. I mean, she didn't even give a shit. She was just like, yoink, I'll take that. On the deposit into a personal checking account, she had an account balance of $35 before that. She began to collect significant. And so 2020 is the big year, like I said, began to collect. significantly more money in charitable donations. Let me just take a, let's see. I want to just check. I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody with the turtle chair there. Uh, if we got any donos here. 
Oh my goodness gracious. Real quick, let me just go through these donuts because we got a bunch here. You guys are very generous tonight. And unlike Monica Cannon Grant, I pay taxes and I like report all of this as income. So anyway, Christina says, what a great day to see a real racist and fraud behind bars. She owes this to all of you. Great job, Turtle Boy. Thank you very much, Christina. Next up, we have, um, so that's 20. Let's see. We got uh, uh, $10. Uh, keep up the real journalism, says Paisley. Thank you, Paisley. We got Marianne from $25. She says, congrats. Who rolled? Zayna Merchant. I'm looking at you. And Didi Delgado, looking at you. $50 from Jessica. Proud member of this sex cult. Welcome to the sex cult, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have to start selling shirts for that, by the way. Uh, time for a victory turtle lap. A turtle victory lap, says JV. Said Donnie's 25. Thank you. Kathleen says, this is a great day. Congrats, Unc. $25. Thank you very much, Kathleen. It is a great day. Adam says, Franconia Street congratulates Howland. So Adam sends 25. Adam's from my old hood. I used to live over on Howland Terrace growing up in Franconia Street in Worcester. We were, we were close neighbors, I guess. Next up, we have... Uh, Melinda says, sends 50 and says, was M M Monica Cannon Grant on section eight while paying herself 170? No, nope, but we're going to see if she's doing something else. Joanna says, been waiting for this. And, and she donates, by the way, $50. So thank you very much, Melinda. Uh, $25 from Joanna. She has been waiting for this day for a long time. Great work. Thank you, Joanna. So have I. And then $25 from Matthew says, Turtle Rider for life. What a victory. So thank you guys. It uh, has been a victory for all of us. You can put it back up, Deb. Thank you. Oh, we're off on point tonight. So, again, if you guys uh, feel like donating, you can do the same with the Turtle Chat above. I'll check those periodically. Um, I'm also Cash App, Dollar Sign, Uncle Turtle Boy, if you like it that way. So, and again, this is why I work. This is what I live to do. Oh, Noel sends $25 and says, for congratulations, this is a huge win. Thank you very much, Noel. In 2020, violence in Boston began to collect significantly more money in charitable uh, donations. Uh, for example, the VIB account received approximately 50 grand in donations in the month of April, but that was before George Floyd, its largest month at the time. With this larger influx, Cannon, Grant, and Clark began to help themselves to greater amounts. <laughs> so ATM cash withdrawals totaling $16,000 over a period of two weeks. They took out 16 grand. How about this? I, I didn't know Monica was such an investor transferring $900 to a Robinhood account in her name and $500 to an E-Trade. She was, a, she was like, who does she think she is? Dave Portnoy? Like, what are you doing on the stock market, Monica? Paying approximately $1,700 in outstanding easy pass tolls. How do you have that much in easy pass tolls? That's crazy. And you work for a freaking easy pass, doesn't he? Anyway, in addition to the VIB account, Monica and Clark, took monies from the PayPal account uh, continuing into 2021 to purchase a car, a car for the first house or for the, for a family member, for family member one, they bought their kid a car. Have you seen Deb? Have you seen Monica's kids before? I've seen the, uh, the rapper kid. Oh, him. Have you seen the daughters? Um, I think one of them, maybe. Yeah. They won't fit in the Corolla. Okay, they must have yeah. gotten this for a big. They were all home. sharp. They were all shopping at Lane Bryant. Yes, they're all shopping at <laughs> that Lane. That was a family trip. <laughs> that was definitely a family trip. So apparently, the whole family's making cash money on this whole thing. So, uh, family member one, number one gets a free car. That's cool to pay rent for Boston residents too. So they had two homes as well, and pay for hundreds of Uber Eats orders for food deliveries. To do they ever cook? No. To Boston residences, one, two in their home at the Bristol residence. That is Bristol County. That is the Taunton home. Monica Cannon Grant um, transactions included. On July 6th of 2020, they transferred $9,700 from VIB to Clark's personal checking account. He used personal checking account debit card to pay a Boston car dealership $9,600 for a 2012 Honda sedan for family member one. So it was, it was a Honda. Okay, so... Whatever. Honor about Honda's a nice car. So I drive a Honda. Honor about December 22nd, 2020, the Grant's personal checking account balances were $300 and $796 because these funds were insufficient to pay the monthly rent of $4,200 for Boston residents. 
For, where are they living? The back bay? $4,200 in rent? That's insane. On or about January 1st, 2021, Cannon Grant transferred five grand from the VIB PayPal account to her personal checking account to make monthly rent payment for Boston residence number two. So she's paying rent with this on or about September, 2020. Uh, so, okay. So this is interesting timeline on or about September of 2020. Remind me, Deb, what happened in July of 2020 that made them do this? Wasn't he, uh, I don't know. No. So VIB, why do you think they filed their 2017 Oh yeah, we, you wrote a blog because Sandy had insurance. Yeah, that's it. I, I mean, honestly, without that blog, she never would have paid. She wasn't paying any taxes. She wasn't doing any taxes until I wrote that blog. And Monica Cannon Grand, these people like the oh, he's so irrelevant. He doesn't matter. Well, apparently, I do because you read. You got off your ass and you did your taxes finally. You lied on them, but you did them. And I wonder who the accountant is that even signed off on this. You know, I mean, this is why Zayna Merchant should really be. Zena Merchant should be arrested. Uh, Tito Jackson should be in handcuffs. A lot of people should be arrested right now. Uh, for each of the submitted filings, Cannon Grant signed and declared under penalties of perjury that they were correct. These forms declared, among other things, that they collected no salary or other benefits. So just flat out lies. Flat out lies. In soliciting donations and applying for grants and other charitable organizations, uh, contributions, they represented to the AGO donors and charitable institutions that funds received by them were dispensed in accordance of the terms of uh, the grants. I mean, that obviously was not true. Now is the fun part. The pandemic comes around. Okay. So the pandemic unemployment assistance wire fraud conspiracy to uh, defraud. On March 27th, the coronavirus, uh, the CARES Act created a new temporary federal unemployment insurance program to provide public uh, pandemic unemployment assistance, PUA, for federal. And we all know this. A lot of us got this. And that's fine. You know, if the government is, you know, shutting down your business and making it impossible for you to work, they should pay you. I mean, it was ridiculous, but it's the least they can do. Massachusetts DUA was the state agency that administered it and uh, blah, blah, blah. The money's paid or wire communications, blah, 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 blah. To receive them, claimants were required as applicable to create online accounts to submit the application, blah, blah, blah. We know how to do that. To continue to receive weekly benefits, the claimants were required to submit weekly certifications uh, that were truthful. Now, I, I, I applied for some of this because um, when the... Uh, pandemic began like ad, like i make money off advertising revenue right and so i lost tremendous amounts of advertising revenue because businesses weren't spending money in advertising obviously they they slashed their budgets with that it was an economic stagnation like nothing happened and so i obviously applied for a couple weeks got my uh you know whatever and then i as soon as the economy picked up again and i started making money on advertising i did the decent thing and i stopped collecting Okay, because that's what you're supposed to do. But anyway, back to the uh, matter at hand here. Monica didn't do that. So Monica, to continue receiving, uh, they were required to submit weekly whatever. Um, overview of them. Let's see what they did wrong. Beginning in May of 2020 and continuing through 21, Cannon Grant and Clark uh, and co-conspirators known and unknown to the grand jury agreed to fraudulently apply to at mass DUA for unemployment benefits Um and they use funds to pay for their joint household expenses and other personal expenditures. So going on, let's go on to the next page, number 34 down there. Okay, there it is. All right. Among the manner and means by which Cannon Grant and their co-conspirators carried out the conspiracy, they co co coordinated the submission of false online applications and certifications. Uh, the concealing both the VIB income and his income working for the commuter service company uh, using fraudulently obtained PUA income to pay for their household, uh, whatever expenses and phony documentation. Where do we see what they got for that? On May 19th, the grants each submitted false fraudulent applications to mass DUA on the same date in their um, applications. They certify blah, 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 that they, you know, were not, 
whatever, making money. And Cannon, Grant, and Clark's respective um, on May 19th applications, each defendant sought to collect dating back to March of 2020. Cannon Grant claimed that her, quote, place of employment closed because of COVID-19. Her place, she had no place of employment. <laughs> and that she did not have earnings in excess of $89 in any work week between March 8th and May 16th. Clark Grant claimed, among other things, that he was self-employed. Now, Clark Grant, we, we saw this when he was indicted in... Um, October. He was the guy that was, he was collecting, he's the reason they got caught. Clark was working for the commuter rail or whatever, making all this money and then applying. He did this for like a year and a half. He made like 70 grand and he was collecting his full salary the whole time. And that's how they got caught because you get them on that. And then they start looking into all the other shit and we predicted this would happen. And it's finally here. It's finally here. He said he was self-employed and he had all these contractors that, you know, weren't doing business. None of them were real. The whole thing was made up. He had a job. He was aware that they were false among other things and that her employment, our place of employment had not closed, that she was working for VIB as its CEO and that she was paying herself income. Clark Grant, it was also aware of the same shit. Cannon Grant collects while collecting PUA. In or about number 39, June or July of 2020, Cannon Grant and a business associate entered into a consulting agreement with a Massachusetts media company. Who do you think this consulting, Deb, who do you think the consulting partner is there? I have Tito? an idea. Who? Tito. Oh, that's a good guess. I think Tito's got his own gig going with the marijuana, I feel like. I think this was, it, I was, think this, was this like around Michaela or was that 2019? Uh, no, Michaela was 2021. I think this was, I think it was Dee Dee. That's what I'm guessing. Oh, probably. So, yeah. Now this is, this is the grift. So check the, this is such classic social justice nonsense, racism, industrial complex in or about um, the, so this business associate entered into a consulting agreement with the Massachusetts media company uh, and the associate they would be paid $75,000, 75 grand to provide diversity, equity, and inclusion consulting services. Oh, for fuck's sake. I can't even, guys. It's like, this is. I've been saying this from the beginning. The best thing that ever happened to these people was the death of George Floyd. June, June and July. You think that's a coincidence of 2020? And they were just looking for a black person to give money to. And Monica Cannon Grant was the loudest person in the room. And then they just do a Google search, like, you know, picture some woman and stone them with too much money on her hand. I don't know. Okay. Oh, George Floyd. Oh, that's, oh dear. That's so unfortunate. That, why won't they get off that black man's neck? He can't even breathe. This must happen all the time. These racist police officers are going around killing black men like, like, like hotcakes. What's going on out here? I need to, I need to give money to a black person. Okay. Google. Okay. Uh, black person, Boston, enter, comes up, Boston Globe, Monica Cannon Grant, okay, she'll do, okay, write her a check, and that's what these people did, it was just like, diver and then we all had to learn, remember, we all have to learn how to be anti-racist, and for that, we need to go to a seminar at work, and sit through some bullshit hearing from some piece of shit, like Monica Cannon Grant, some absolute charlatan, and you knew they were a charlatan, and you had to sit there at your stupid job and listen to this asshole lecture you about your privilege. Well, she's collecting $75,000 to tell you that. Oh, fuck off. God, these people are horrible. I said I wasn't going to swear anymore. But that shit pisses me off. Anyway, poor Nancy and Stoneham just wanted to help out. So they got a $75,000 fee. When asked by another employee whether income from this media company was going to VIB, she responded in sum and substance that this was not going to VIB. So another employee's like, yo, are we going to get some of that? She's like, nah. She's like, I got another entity doing social justice works is going to. It's called Monica Cannon Grant. In reality, she deposited her share payments approximately $26,800 into her personal checking account to pay for their household expenses, food and expenditures while collecting PUA payments. I love the way the government put this together here. Even in the checks, it says DEI trainings on them. 
<laughs> like, and then down here, it shows twelve thousand dollars that she got in one check, and then eight hundred dollars for both of them in the uh, for for unemployment. So she's getting paid and that, just absolute fraud. And then she did another uh, the month later with the check for uh, I forget how much money. Basically, it, it adds up to twenty six thousand dollars. She took them for for that. Uh, so she received two additional consulting payments for eight thousand and six thousand dollars, which she deposited into her personal bank account. And they got all the receipts, baby. Okie dokie. So you guys get the point there. Consulting services. She writes for the check. Um, and she lied. Like, so she was making all this money and then like $75,000 and still collecting unemployment. Think of how greedy you are. I mean, you imagine making $75,000 to teach about diversity, equity, and conclusion. You just, inclusion. You just get up there and you tell a bunch of white people that they're bad and they should feel sorry for, you know, historical injustices that they had nothing to do with. And then you can make 75 grand and it wasn't enough for her. She's like, I need 800 more a week. What a fucking moron so anyway back to this um i want to teach a diversity equity inclusion class that would be fun it would be it would just be really simple everybody shut the fuck up about the whining and the impression pull your pants up treat each other with dignity okay go to work every day wake up early get the job done take care of your family and then you don't got to worry about any of this shit. I have a thought. What? So what if the media company is the Globe? Ooh. How much did they give her? 75 grand? Oh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> I like where you're going with this one, Deb. That right? would be. They wrote that glowing article on her like that month, June. That would that make. With the, with the sea so of people sense. behind her. Oh, my God. Now we're gonna have to look into that. That's Absolutely. that's why that's why that's why Deb is, I think, man, good job, Deb. Great contribution. Love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, let's go back to this thing. Here. So um, I like that contribution. That's great. So anyway, uh, look at that big ass check. So she got all those checks. I'm now on number um I'm on number 46. Can we go to that? Okay. So shortly after uh, collecting her consulting payment. She had VIB use a third-party payroll service to pay herself salaries of almost three grand a week starting in October of 2020. So that's where the 170 grand a year came in. Although she received weekly payroll from the period from October through March, Cannon Grant submitted fraudulent PUA certifications. To, and by the way, like you can nonprofits can pay their officers salaries. I don't know why she just didn't pay herself a salary. Because she wanted to make herself seem noble. Oh, no, we're out here. I don't pay myself nothing. It's all, all for the people. All for the people. No, it's for you. You got caught. Dummy. Although Cannon Grant received weekly VIB payroll for the period of uh, that time, she submitted pro fraudulent PUA. So we know all that. So thousands of dollars adding up here and there. Yeah. On or about March 24th, uh, DUA sent her a letter informing her so this is when they started to catch on to her, March of 2021. Because you're still collecting then? Come on. She needed to provide them with additional documentation to substantiate that she was eligible. And she provided the necessary documentation that she'd be required to repay the benefits she would receive if she couldn't. On or about March 26th, Cannon Grant texted Clark Grant about the notice letter. He responded by text that he should have one of her associates, Associate 2, create a false letter informing Mass DUA that violence in Boston's building was closed. In March, this is like insane. The March text exchange between them was as follows. And so I don't know if you guys can see that, but Clark is saying to her on the left, unemployment company, unemployment caught my ass. <laughs> They caught, like, basically I was doing something wrong. They asked me to provide documents by June unless I'll have to pay it all back. And then she goes, have so-and-so do a letter to say that the building was closed. I don't know who so-and-so is. Maybe Zayna. Is that short? Actually, we can probably figure that out. That looks short. That could be Zayna. I could totally see that. 
to say that the building was closed. Like they're not going to find that out. Well, we'll just tell them it was closed. All right. Associate number two did create a false letter for Cannon Grant. So why isn't associate number two being charged? Unless they're pulling a Gen Duso and just, you know, going state's witness to save themselves. It says didn't. Did not. Oh, they did not. Oh, I read that too fast. Thank you very much. That's Yeah, good job. You're earning money tonight. Mm. Did not create a false letter for Cannon Grant. In or about June, Clark enlisted associates to assistance in creating documentation that he submitted them to fraudulently continue to receive uh, PUA benefits. So they did do that, it looks like. Or he they tried to get it, at least. I don't know. Clark uh, submits false documents to MassDUA. On March 23rd, MassDUA sent him a letter informing him he needed to provide them with additional documentation to, you know, to prove that he was eligible. So on to number 52. In or about uh, May of 2021, Clark Grant had Associate 2 draft a four-page independent contractor agreement for Clark Grant that was backdated with an effective date of March 24, 2020. The ICA purported that Clark Grant would provide facilities management services for a company called Partners United, Inc., whose principal was Jordan Quattrell. Okay. So ICA purported that Clark would provide facilities management. So this is like a fake letter from some guy named Jordan Cottrell in Dorchester. This was all in the October indictment. That, uh, But this person wasn't real. And uh, there was no address. That was like no, nobody lived there. And that this was just a way for him to pretend. So this guy, this fake guy, Jordan Cottrell, was like, oh, we can't hire you. We're, we're hurting because of the pandemic. And that's what he needed to collect unemployment. But that person wasn't real. <laughs> On or about June 20th, 2021, he responded to their employment substantiation request by filling out an online form indicating he was self-employed. So we've been over all this. I'm kind of going to skip a lot of this. He basically stole $67,000 fraudulently in unemployment. I mean, think of how many people lost their jobs, suffered through that goddamn pandemic that the government did this to us and not these guys though, they were taking an advantage of that. So that um, 56 here, I think we're on 56, right? Yeah. Or no, 55, 56. Okay. Let's go to 56. Or did it mention like plane tickets and stuff? Yeah. He, he paid for plane tickets, new furniture, Amazon purchases, and the costs of a new motorcycle. Holy shit. Jesus. The mortgage lender was a Chicago based mortgage lending company that did business in interstate commerce, including home mortgage lending in Massachusetts. And this is the one basically, I'll just go through this real quick. What they did was they attempted to, when they applied for the mortgage, they went to go buy that home in Taunton, which again, why would you move to Taunton? Like the second they got money, they wanted to leave Boston. Okay, I get it. Taunton? You know, Taunton? That defeats the purpose of getting out the hood. You're moving to Taunton. Might as well move to freaking Holyoke or something. But I digress. Anyway, um, so the mortgage lender, um, yeah, basically he just represents himself as having all this money to buy a house. He wants to get a $400,000 mortgage. And to do that, you have to show revenue stream. Like when I went to buy a house, you, we had to show two months of income. In order to get, you know, pre-financed or whatever, pre-approved for financing. And that's fine. And then they'll pre-approve you and, and they can see that you got steady income. But he doesn't have personal income. There's a dollar fifty in his checking account. So he shows the VIB account, which has almost half a million dollars in it, because of course it does. They hadn't stolen that part yet. They left some in there. Okay. And as soon as I saw that in October, I'm like, oh man, they got a lot of shit here. So we kind of went over all that last time and that's a big no-no. You can't do that. Now, I don't know who approved them. That part was still unclear how they got the mortgage without that. Like somebody still had to approve them, right? So I don't get that, but whatever it is what it is. The object of, let's go on to number 60. Oh, okay. Um, the object of the mortgage fraud conspiracy was to obtain a home mortgage loan. Okay, so they did that for the, the Taunton house. 
They submitted the online application. So we went over all that to get four, you know, there's half a million dollars in the bank account. He represented it as his own personal money. It was not his personal money. And then, so go on to number 64 here. Cannon Grant issues herself a VIB salary bonus. She got a bonus, guys, because she's doing such a good job. So on or about May 26, she issued herself approximately $22,000 salary bonus to help pay for mortgage costs incurred by Cannon Grant and Clark Grant as they sought to obtain a mortgage. You know, they went to buy a house and they're just like, wait, what? Closing costs? What are that? Like she's so unfamiliar with home ownership that she's like, oh shit, we need money for that too? 22 grand? Oh, no problem. Just go over to VIB and I'll give myself a raise because I earned it. So she deposited all that money on her about May 26th. They executed a gift letter pursuant to which Cannon Grant agreed to gift Clark 13 grand toward the purchase of the Bristol residence. Thereafter, on or about May 28th, Cannon Grant used her VIB bonus proceeds to purchase a $13,000 official check to be used toward the purchase of the Bristol residence. They then executed and submitted the gift letter as a part of their final mortgage application, which Clark Grant submitted in July of 2021. On or about July 2021, the mortgage lender identified other problems with his finances. Uh, the mortgage lender requested that he clarify why he was receiving mass DUA unemployment benefits while he was a full-time employee with the community service. So this is really how he got caught guys, because the mortgage company was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are you collecting unemployment? If you didn't have income, what they are the ones that kind of tipped him off to this. And we saw this in the, in October to whom it may concern. The mass DUA unemployment deposits were due uh, to the clearing contracts that were canceled due to COVID-19. So this is how he gets caught in this. He tells the mortgage company basically that, the mortgage lender. He knew this uh, explanation was false because he knew that the payments were due to his scheme to defraud the mass DUA and not due to canceled contracts. After the mortgage lender found that the explanation was insufficient, Clark Grant submitted the phony uh, whatever, and another false explanation to the mortgage lender, et cetera. Concerning the uh, cleaning contract, uh, yeah, whatever, we, we saw the last time. Okay, and on to number 70. He knew that this explanation was false, it was fictitious, um, and blah, blah, blah. And then finally, uh, in June of 2021, the closing date for the purchase of the house approached, and lenders informed Canning Grant and Clark that he did not appear to have sufficient funds to pay the closing costs. To remedy that issue, Cannon Grant and Clark orchestrated the issuance of a fake $3,000 gift to Clark Grant. Because I believe my understanding of this, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, it seems like she can't, they can't take a loan from someone. So they, they can only accept a gift. But who's going to give them three grand, right? So, she actually is not allowed to pay this back. So she gets a $3,000 gift to purchase this house from an unknown person. And as part of the deal, it has to be, uh, you know, it cannot be paid back. Associate three wired her and the real estate attorney and executed a gift letter in which Clark Grant signed and submitted the mortgage lender as part of the final application package in July of 2021, Clark Grant certified that no repayment of this gift is expected or implied. So there you go. Canning Grant knew that the Griff letter was false because Canning Grant had agreed to pay back the three grand that Associate Three had paid towards their closing costs. And then we go down and they got the house. And then there's these this message from the person who gave them the three thousand dollar gift and like, hey, can we get that money back? And she's like, yeah, I'll have it August second, no problem. So it's not a gift; it's a loan. That's what it is. So I guess that's illegal. I don't know. All right, in May of 2021, Cannon Grant and co-conspirators, so in number 77 here. So Suzanne sends 15 and says, uh, for in memory of my late fiance, Ed, four years. God bless you, Ed. On or about August 2nd, 2021, as the prior engagement, uh, whatever. Okay, overacts and furtherments of the fraud conspiracy with mortgage. From in or about May 20 of 2021, through August 2nd of that year, Cannon Grant and co-conspirators 
uh, blah, 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 in furtherance of the conspiracy. Okay, so this is just kind of an overview of all the shit that they did, all the lies. Okay, so they did all that. And then they get into what the grand jury is doing. And that, you know, it's just kind of an over. I think this is kind of the end here. I think that this is it. And they're basically like, yep, we're charging them with all these counts, blah, 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 mail fraud because of the check that she received, the $10,000 check. <laughs> uh, just a, unbelievable. Let's go down. Can we go down to um, page 35? No. Look at all these counts. Holy shit. These are serious. This is serious shit, man. I'll go to page. Um, page is this. Page 40. Go to page 40, Deb. And you can kind of see, Go if you scroll up, you can see the list here of all the charges kind of in a nice little box. So one to two counts of wire fraud, uh, one count of conspiracy, one count of mail fraud. By my count, that's 13 counts of wire fraud, aiding and abetting, and one count of making false statements to a mortgage lending company. So guys, um, Monica can't agree. going to jail for a long time. My, like people are like, you know, people are like, well, it's, it's, we don't know if it's going to happen. Oh, the feds don't waste their time on this shit. This is not what they do. They get to pick and choose their cases and they get to make an example of people. Why do you think they went so hard after J. Sil Correa? They are not here to play. This woman, her biggest crime wasn't threatening. And by the way, the one thing that hasn't been touched at all is Michaela Miller. None of like that was just not in any of this shit. <laughs> God, imagine it. Like, let's not forget what they did with that, man. Oh my God. What they, she did to those children. Horrible. She raised 60 grand, 60 grand paid for the independent autopsy that of ashes that never happened of a girl who committed suicide. She's fucking evil, fucking evil, man. This chick. And she, this is the greatest day of karma in my life. It is the probably one of the most satisfying days in my tenure as turtle boy head turtle here. And, uh, I am so happy about this because nobody deserves jail more than her. And ironically, this is kind of good for her brand. Cause she gets to play the whole, like, Oh, I was too opinionated and too strong and too black. And they came after me because of that. Just like Martin. And she's going to play that whole thing. And she can tell people that isn't, uh, well, she sits in jail for 15 years, hopefully. Isn't the Michaela Miller money still in the GoFundMe? I don't think you can cash that out at any time, but it keeps the tab going. So the Michaela Miller GoFundMe is still up. It's still up. So, yeah. Um, before we continue, guys, I just want to um, address something. Uh, by the way, I love... Can we start sending me pictures, guys? I want people to start sending me pictures of just all of the respectable members of our society who associated with Monica Cannon Grant. Chrome has lost permission. Okay, hold on. I got to share these images. Hold on. On your Mac, system preferences. Hold on. Click system preferences. Let's see. Security and privacy. Not let me share an image unless I do something. There it is. Okay. And then click privacy. Okay. It's on privacy. And then click screen recording. Oh, I think I took this off. And then... Check the box next to your browser, Google Chrome. I'm not trying to share Google Chrome. I don't know. It's not working. Okay. Send me images, guys, of uh, anything. I, I, I guess I could send them to... Uh... To Deb. Send them to Deb. I'll send them to Deb. and I'll, I'll send them to you in uh, Facebook Messenger, okay? The images I want you to share here. Give me one sec, guys. So if you guys have any images of Monica Cannon Grant with... Uh, you know, respectable members of 
our society. Send them to me. I almost want to put a collage together. So I sent you two there. If you want to bring those up. Although I would hardly consider a couple of these people. Give me one sec. Okay. Did she bring it up? Did you get those, Deb? So there we are. There's, uh, <laughs> there's, I mean, this is perfect. This is my favorite one. This is why diversity, equity, inclusion is the most overrated thing. Because when all you care about is identity politics, this is what you get. You have Michelle Wu, Rachel Rollins, and uh, Monica Candy Green there. All I see in that picture are cunts, communists and carpetbaggers and this is what they've done this these are the people running the city complaining about marginalization and blah, blah blah you run the fucking city you like you guys run everything and you're the most corrupt incompetent people ever okay like let's stop focusing on because oh but we're diverse we're diverse well who cares if you're diverse if you're fucking corrupt what the hell got another one there any other images Oh, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> oh, what a loser. Bad day for him. Bad day for him. So I, I also wanted to address one other thing that while I have you guys here. Can you bring up that uh, those two others? Did I send you the two other ones? Because this pissed me off, and I'm going to say something about this real quick. It is a little personal, but I don't care. Hold on. Okay, you got Okay. Yeah, I got to go back. Hold on, I need to get out of here. Go yeah, ahead. you just let me know. We, show that video. we have to show that video too. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll show the video in one second. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me... All right, cool. Let me get this. All right. Should be good now. Share. Okay. So this was, um, this was posted, right? So my, I have a, um, a personal, uh, conversation out there that I was in a group chat with that images are being shown. And I just want to be on record as saying, I don't care. Keep them coming. I just don't care. These, these, they think that this is going to take me down, but honestly, this was back when I was having like severe mental health issues and I was, uh, you know, they, they've started showing them all. And I'm like, this is actually, I, I, I looked at them. I'm like, Oh, this actually makes me look like it confirms that like I was having a lot of issues and I was getting support from these people. One of who has gone rogue and decided to share these with the world, but that's a different story. But this one really pissed me off. They shared this one and they, and it's an image, right? It says, uh, remember when he ha sent his daughter to school knowing she had COVID and I have the top thing there. And I said, yeah, they're good. She went to school all week. So they're posting my daughter's information up there. She probably gave it to everyone too. So I didn't, my daughter tested positive for COVID in, in September and because she had been sick, which means dumb asses. And first of all, don't bring up my kids. Okay. Leave them out of it. I mean, have some class, will you come at me all you want? Don't go after kids. What's wrong with you? They're six. Seriously. Animals. Uh, I, she tested positive for COVID. So I'm like, oh, she, she, she obviously had COVID the whole week because she was sick and she got like, she started, you know, coughing and stuff. And so we're like, well, she didn't just get it now. She had it. So that means she was spreading it in school because obviously your stupid mask doesn't work. And that's what I mean by that. And after you test positive, you can't go to school. But these morons are using a six-year-old to try to get back at me. And this is what really pissed them off. I want a name. I want this woman, this woman. I'm going to find out who she is and we're going to have a serious issue. So this woman, Lynn Ann, she used to be a turtle rider, I guess. She's been messaging me story ideas for years, years. Like we seem to be on the same page politically. She lives in New Hampshire. I don't know her last name, but I need, that's your homework guys. We need to find out this woman's last name. Okay. And she says, this is sickening. I stopped watching 
when he told me I was a child abuser for having my child wear a mask. Uh, he is the people like him are the reason we are never going to see this illness end. And then somebody replies and said, it would be a shame if the area schools saw this. And then she goes, maybe just maybe somebody has already sent it to the school. So let me be very fucking clear at Lynn Ann. If you contacted a six year old school with some bullshit like this, because you're mad about a blog, because by the way, you're, you're friends with a child abuser. Like you're getting your, this person who runs this page is a, is a child abuser, lost half of their kids to the state. Years and years of neglect and abuse. You're a horrible person. I'm going to find, I, I, we need to find out who you are. Cause you know who I am. Why should you hide behind Lynn Ann? You're calling my kid's school. You're, you're doing that. You thought that was smart, Lynn? So I messaged her very angrily and I gave it a full turtle boy, baby. I'm like, don't you ever, if I find out you contacted the school, you filthy, disgusting pig, you better not have, you better not have. I don't know what the hell would make you think that that is an okay or acceptable thing to do, Lynn, but it's, you don't get the high band Lynn Ann. So that is our homework for tonight. What is her URL? Um, well, she blocked me on Facebook, but let me, I'll post the URL in the comments if you guys want to find her. Cause we need, like, we all agree that is fucked up, right? Like who does that? Who does that? Hold on. I'll find it. I'm going to post it cause she blocked me, but I think the URL, you'll be able to see it. Um, Lynn, Ann, where'd she go? I got a lot of messages today, so I got to find this real quick. Okay, I got it. By the way, David wants to call in. Oh, does he? Okay, we'll have him call in in one moment. Right. You can take that. Okay. So uh, I am going to put right there. Okay. I mean, it is a despicable, despicable thing to call. I mean, okay, you don't like me. You don't, you, you're dumb enough to fall for, you know, the lies of a child abuser. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You're a lonely, bored, pathetic housewife. I get it. Okay. That's fine. But to take this so seriously that you would then contact an elementary school about this. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? So I put a guys in the link. There it is. Okay. That is Lynn's Facebook page. I want a last name. I want a last name. I want everything. I want town, everything. I think it's placed out around there. Oh, Megan Anderson's here. Megan Anderson's here. So Megan is the uh, victim, or daughter really is the victim, of the Michaela Miller lie that Monica Cannon Grant spread. And she says, Calvina Struthers had already cashed in, moved away. Oh, she's not living there anymore? How about that? And Monica just stopped contact because she didn't get the money she wanted and thought she deserved. Ah, oh, so the little beef there. So Calvina screwed her over. You should. I wish you sued them. Now, you had a great case to sue. I'll tell you that much. Great case to sue. Um, I should have followed the advice of y'all from day one. I'm only 14 grand in debt. The hell? Ah, yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. That that's the worst part. It was your daughter's friend. She couldn't even go to her funeral or anything like that. All because Monica Cannon Grant lied and lied and lied and lied. So all right. Um, so that's, uh, does anybody, so David wants to call in. Let me, and Calvina started another GoFundMe. Well, she's a grifter, obviously. David, if you'd like to call in, there's the link there. Um, let me real quick check on the donos, uh, in case there's any more turtle chats here. Oh, we got a few. Let me pull these up. You can still sue them. That's a good point. All right. So $25 from Colleen says psyched for you. Thank you very much, Colleen. I'm psyched too. Uh, from Megan says, I haven't followed much since I dropped Facebook, but Donald Trump Jr. just posted this story and I knew you broke the story and I just sent him a screenshot that I sent him telling him to check your page. Unreal. And that's the thing. I've never donated, but now I am Meg. Thank you very much. Unreal that I haven't seen your stuff in a year. 
And I mean, it's just like, it's frustrating when you see that Donald Trump Jr. sharing the story and it's like, I kind of, the, the reason the story is happening and you don't get credit for it, but you know, people who know, they know. So that's really what matters to me. Brenda says, great day for Turtle Boy and Turtle Riders. Rest well in the Turtle Graveyard, Monica Cannon Grant. Absolutely. Hope they don't serve her chicken in the slammer. We all know what comes next, says Joanna. Uh, Andrew says, $50. He says, you outdid yourself this time, Turtle Boy. Great job. It's a night to celebrate. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much, Andrew. I appreciate that. $100 from Jack. Says so she scammed over one million dollars and invested only fifteen hundred. <laughs> Jack always has a good perspective on these things into an E-Trade account. Please, God, tell us what her stock picks were. God, I mean, that's a great pick too. I mean, I wonder who the hell I would love to find out what she invested in. Seriously. We have uh ten dollars from Alex. Says this is a huge break and well deserved for the ringer. You've been put through the last few months. A huge W. And thank you very much. And to me, this was like a huge day for my mental health and be perfectly honest with you. All this other shit, man, has just been overwhelming. And it kind of put it into perspective. Like all these people, they don't fucking matter. You're guys, did you know that they did a, a five hour live stream looking about just didn't no talk or anything looking at our group chat messages. Imagine how boring your life ha has to be to sit there and read strangers, group chat messages, from a year ago for five hours and be interested in it. You have to be like Lynn Ann, who give me your name, baby. Give me your name. Lynn Ann, you want to do you thought that would be cute to do that to my kid? You you do that to kids, Lynn? We know you support child abuse, Lynn. Not cool. Not cool. This is a huge break. So thank you very much, Alex. Jenny says, You made my day. Congratulations. Proud to support you. Jenny, I'm happy to do it. It's what I do. Another 100 from Joseph. He says, keep up the good work. Well, I will, my man. Thank you to people like you. Okay. So um, we got David. And can we play this tape real quick? Watch this tape, guys. This is freaking hilarious. Watch this. This is Monica's right-hand man. All she's got left. Oh, it's not working. Oh, it's too bad. The audio is freaking hilarious on this. Let me try it on my end. Not, yeah, what's up? I don't know what's happening with that. Let me try my I don't know end. Either. Let me pause. I don't know why I can't see it on my, um, weird. It's too bad. Cause this video is absolutely hilarious. I wish we could get it. Are we still talking? Of course we're still talking. Monica Cannon Grant. What is that white shit on his lip? I don't, that's a great question. I don't know. Where's Ernst? It's another great question. David, the Druids here. How you doing, Dave? I'm good, my friend. Can you hear me okay? We can. What do you think of all this? Split. Listen, the first thing I want to say before we get actually into any... I mean, obviously, we've gone through a lot of the detail, but on behalf of all of us out here who are... We just read the blogs. What a great day for you, and it's a testament to the hard work, the investigation, and the fact you've been relentless with this criminal woman, that she has had the day she had today, and you've had the day that you've deserved today, so... Round of applause for yourself, sir. Well, thank you, David. I really appreciate the kind words there. Thank you. Nah, you've earned it, my friend. You've earned it. Like oh, my God. I got it. Hold on. Yeah, we may have messed up, but again, we're not educated on what a 501c3 is supposed to do all the time. But according to federal prosecutors, what? this was not just a minor. <laughs> oh, I got to play that again. Can I? Where did, where did I put that? I don't know how that Go file it. Yeah, just... rewind. Rewind. Hold on. You got to watch this file. Actually, I think I got it over here. Be mad at a person like that. I mean, yeah, we make mistakes. Yeah, we may have messed up, but again, we're not educated on what a five hundred one c three is supposed to do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we make mistakes. 
We're not educated on what a 503 is supposed to do all the time. Come yeah. on now. We're just yeah. bringing in millions of dollars. And <laughs> we, I don't we know just what done, the fuck I'm We doing. just done stole $1 million, but just because we didn't know what the 501c3 was. <laughs> is that your American voice, David? <laughs> uh, that was my that was my deep south voice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so... I, I won't I mean, do it again. I apologize. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I think British people who try to talk American is always funny to me. Hey, you guys think well, you talk? Well, listen, listen. You... You still owe us big time for Dick Van Dyke doing that terrible British accent in Mary Poppins. So, you know, <laughs> what goes around comes around. Yeah. The federal prosecutors, this was uh, not I, just a minor or be mad at a person like that. I mean, yeah, we make mistakes. Yeah, we may have messed up. But again, we're not educated on what a 501c3 is supposed to do all the time. But yeah, the come on. Prosecutors, this come was on. not just a minor or Come on. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. Come on, man. Okay. You know the come thing. On, man. You know, uh, I'm really happy that uh, I think Monica Cannon Grant is going to go to. She's going to go to jail. I mean, people are like, "Oh yeah, one this, not, sure, this is this is big time wire fraud." This and this isn't a, a local court she's going to go to here. This she's going to be up in a major superior court, and she's going to do hard time. Federal court. I mean, this is yeah. she's going to go to jail for a while. She got that new baby. I'm not going to know mom, luckily. Which is great. I mean, like, and where's the money going to come from? There's no more money. Well, Didi cool. Delgado's having a whip round for, for catch up or something on, on the web and today. Have you seen that? Like, yeah, she raised twelve hundred. That'll last a long Embarrassing. time. Embarrassing. I'm glad oh, you like it. Twelve hundred. That's a light snack for Monica, isn't it? Let's face it. We are not educated. I mean, that is that is one of the great lines of all time. Okay. Do you, uh, do you anybody, think they served those uh, those cheese sandwiches that she was on about in one of her videos? <laughs> she she'll have to live on in jail. Trouble. Yeah, I guess so. Um, go out, go eat your cheese sandwich. Yeah. Do you have anything else, David? Because I'm gonna you you got you have any more questions or anything? Not really. I wanted to congratulate you. I, I mean, the very first time I ever came on as a guest was the day that uh, Kylie Kirkpatrick was arrested, and I thought it would make a nice I, um, I, symmetry I, with today's today's I, events. I thought about the Kylie Kirkpatrick thing too, guys. That was the last two years ago. We, she was arrested uh, and charged with eight felonies for fraud for the same thing. So East Coast, West Coast, we're locking ratchet bitches up. Black, white, doesn't matter. They're all going to jail because of Turtle Boy. And they all have the same thing in common, these people, right? They scam and they they call they they deflect by calling me racist and, and usually that uh, works and it didn't work this time. What they had in common is they're so brazen about it because they're loud and brash and aggressive. They just expect everyone to back down, and the turtle don't back down. Yeah, the turtle and and their personalities are so unlikable that you oh, can't God, yes. wait. Like people just cannot wait for them to go down. Have you spoken to Rayleigh today? I have not had a chance to speak to her, but I'm sure we would have a lot to talk about for sure but anyway david thank you for coming on my guy my pleasure my friend it. lovely to talk to you as always all right so anyway why don't we do a little ask turtle boy if you guys have any questions uh i'm very excited i'm very happy about the way things went today it was an awesome day for turtle boy sports uh not turtle boy sports we, we're rebranding now turtle boy daily news uh and all that hard work man i honestly didn't think the state was going to come i thought she was going to get away with it uh, I was pretty convinced nobody cares, but the squeaky wheel, man, I just never stopped. And I've written more blogs about this woman than anyone. You could get rid of half her charges and give her half the max for the rest. And she'd still be in for 40 years. Wow. That is awesome. No info in the treasure. I got nothing, but I, I'm, I don't see how other people don't fall for this. I don't see how other people don't fall for this, you know? If she was also reading, receiving Medicaid, SNAP, yeah, this could there could be more, man. I I need to start going to the court dates. I, oh, absolutely, man, absolutely. Will you now offer to adopt their kids? I will, and I'm going to let them pick their gender. That's my policy when I foster your kids. I'm very progressive. Monica Candy Grant's kids get to pick their own gender, except for the older one with the guns. I don't. He seems a little bit dangerous, and the morbidly obese ones. I'll take the baby. Would you interview for her from prison? Absolutely, I would. I don't know if she would grant me that interview, but she might be really desperate for attention. The mother of the year thinks she got a wedge driven uh, between Rayla and you. Yeah, like, or dumb, yeah, it's like Rayla. <laughs> I bet you Rayla has absolutely no idea who that, you know, 
the mother of the year even is. Like today made me realize how insignificant they were. Like I matter. Turtle Boy matters. You don't. This is what I do. And what you do is right about me. So I think we're not really on the same level. You made this happen. Honestly, bro, you can have the guy who took out the Capone hood, to your beard, it hold your, Oh, hold your beard. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Elliot Ness. You mean Elliot Ness? No, it's actually a real account. I think her name is actually Lynn, but we got to find her last name. Check the URL in that. It says, okay, she's up to 120 years in the IRS has not pressed charges. Oh my goodness. She's going to jail. And she, so she was released today. Uh, and, but she can't, she can't have anything to do with the money that comes into violence in Boston. And just literally a week ago, she was calling up the globe and calling them white supremacists calling the globe. I mean, that's what she did. And you know, the globe was just like, fuck her, fuck her. We protected this bitch the whole time. And she's going to do us like that. Mm -mm. Do you think, uh, she'll try to drag you into her case? What's she going to say? I got no case. I mean, people, that's the other thing. These people, these idiots, um, I, I don't think it's a burner account. Check the URL. I saw Lynn something in the, in the URL. Um, but these, and somebody could find that out. So, I mean, they, we have a big audience. Somebody knows who that woman is. She's got kids in the place out New Hampshire area. I can, we can find out that out. So Lynn, if you're listening, um, you know, you still have time. You still have time. It doesn't have to be this way. You want to do that to my kids? Well, let's go. You're not going to do that. Is it important that it's federal? Yeah, because they take it a lot more seriously. Federal court's the big time, man. They don't play in federal court. It means you're going to federal prison. With Monica Cannon Grant going to the clink, what will be the excuse Ernst will have to punch an 80-year-old? He got, the, he got away with that, you know. He got those charges dropped somehow. The videotape with that, in fairness, was obstructed, so it's not really clear what happens. That was the URL. That's what I saw. So I started looking it up. So I'm like, Lynn... And like, that has to mean something. Someone out there has to know who Lynn is. Don't poke the turtle daddy. Exactly. Like, don't go after my kids. You know, don't do that. And yeah, like, where's Joe Kennedy? Does he have anything to say about this? Where's Ayanna Presley? Where are all the people? It's going to be so, you know, Monica expects them to like have her back, but they ain't going to have your back. Julia Mejia is not going to come save you. Andrea Campbell's not going to come save you. They want nothing to do with you. That was your biggest crime, Monica, was embarrassing the Democratic Party. That was your mistake. They couldn't, they couldn't have anything to do with you after that. Yeah, like I said, feds do not go after you. They're not going to waste their time on a loser case. She's going to have to plea. She, I mean, she's going to plea. She has to. And she's going to go to jail. Although I could picture her being so, she's literally just, you know, plus size Jesse. Essentially, she's plus size Jussie, and people are like Jussie's insane. Jussie's not insane. Jussie doesn't have mental health issues. Jussie is so used to his entire life hiding behind his identity and playing a victim as a result of that. It's the only card he knows how to do. That's why going, you know, he gets dragged away to, to prison. He's like, I am not suicidal. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm innocent. And he thinks people, uh, this is racist, blah, blah, blah. And it's worked for so long, so why wouldn't he keep doing it, you know? Ooh, is it Lynn Genero? People are saying Lynn Genero in my inbox. Let's see if she comes up. Is there Lynn Genero of New Hampshire? Okay, maybe. We'll find out. I'll search a little more after this. Okay, uh, Feds, let's see. Any other questions you guys have? She doesn't have Jesse's balls. According to reports, she was quiet as a mouse when she was. So I actually watched the hearing today and she was covered in a mask. And oh boy, she has private counsel. I know who's paying for that. I don't know who's paying for that private counsel, but uh, she was quiet. She was quiet. And she, I think she knows that, like, it's fucking, like, it's, it's the fun and games is over, Monica. Fun and games is officially over. 
Uh, Marty Walsh, you're right. I'd love to hear from Marty Walsh. Guess who's going down after Monica? It has to be Calvina. Then it's the yeah. I'd love to see that happen. I hope you sue. I, I I had attorneys, Megan, that would like telling me like they would represent you for free. But that woman, I forget her name. That woman there that started the GoFundMe for an attorney for you, like like he was literally. She's like, no, no, it has to be Joe Cattell, though. It has to be him. And I'm like, well, he doesn't seem to be doing shit. Oh, he's going to. Trust me. <laughs> Never did shit. So I had literally had two or three lawyers lined up that were willing to do it for free. I think that bridge is kind of past, though. So, I mean, lesson they have learned. Don't listen to your friends. Listen to Turtle Boy. We need to have, we need to have a conversation, y'all. We need to have a conversation, y'all. The um, white supremacists and the light-skinned black guy who, were, who, by the way, behind the scenes, that guy that she shits on all the time, he was a major player in all this, too. I think he would like to stay anonymous. But uh, he, ha he, he runs the website, I think it's called The Blackstonian. He has been chronicling her shenanigans for several years. And I, I actually found, that's where I found the video the first time. And I keep, keep getting shit from there. Where's Fauci? That's a great question. That's a great question. He suddenly disappeared. How is Ryan, Brian Riccio dealing with this? Oh, I'm sure I'll say it's racist or something. Who cares about Brian Riccio? He's a loser. Uh, who's telling? Who's good? I mean, dude, all the Uber Eats, man. Dude, she must have just housed down everything. You know, she didn't eat anything healthy either. Like everything was supersized. Everything. She got 40 acres in a cell. Stop it. Stop it. Who had first brought Monica on to T? Uh, the first time I ever got Monica Cannon Grant ever came onto my radar was in like, I think it was October of 2017. There was a teacher in Bridgewater who brought Plymouth Plantation to her class and they do a demonstration where one student acts as the baby and they put the baby in baby tethers. Cause that's how kids learn how to walk back then. And it looks like a leash kind of the baby tethers. Well, there was one black girl in the class and she volunteered to be the baby. So they took a picture of white kids holding the leashes and the black girl. So it looks like they're walking her, but it's, a, it's just, it just happens to be the black girl volunteered for, to be the baby. And of course, Monica Cannon Grant just leads this fire. This racist white teacher doxes the teacher and shit doxes the school. And it's like, are you kidding me? That was the first time Monica ever came on my radar. And then I found her more with Didi. Could we reach out to her pen pals and write a book? Well, she's not going to be in jail for a bit. She's out on uh, probation. So yes, you remember that story from 2017? I remember that too. But did your um, Fauci's job may be gone soon, Rand Paul? But did your kids' um, school call and tell you that? So they wouldn't, they wouldn't. But it's just a matter of like, why are you you're trying to start shit with my kids' school? Don't call my kids' school. What's wrong with you? You know, what's wrong with you? I know the Blackstonian. Is, who the Blackstonian is? Who you mentioned? He has no issues uh, going public. He actually posted the article. On, okay. I mean, she, yeah, she's, his name is Jamal with an RH and he's come on my show before and interviewed me to like, ask me questions because there's a lot of, you know, there's people in Boston who think that I'm a white supremacist, which is just ridiculous. And so he kind of came on the show to be like, are you a white supremacist? Like kind of quell that. And I think we've established uh, by this point that, Definitely not a white supremacist. I'm just not a big identity politics guy. I'm not a big identity politics guy in general. I'm not big on like what my race is. Uh, I'm not big on what anyone's race is. And I just, I'm against forming associations with other human beings based on the color of your skin. Like just because you're white doesn't mean I have any sort of connection to you or allyship with you because of that. And so that's just my thoughts on, on that. And I certainly don't believe in supremacy whatever that is okay anything else guys
I found Lynn Ann. Okay, good. Good. Please let me know. Please let me know her name. Because they're going to play the victim now. She's going to play the victim. Oh, my God. Twitter boy was being so mean to me. Bitch, you came on my kids. Fuck with my kids. You're not innocent. You're not some... They love to do that. I'm some damsel in distress. Chrissy's doing that. Yeah, Yakamaski. Oh, my God. He's coming after me. So mean. Bitch, you're going out of your way to fuck with my life. And you fuck with other people's lives. Like, what's wrong with you? You're not some victim. You're an evil, horrible cunt. That's what you are. Lin Ann. You want to hang out with child abusers? I'm going to treat you like one. Lin Ann didn't know she had to go through like 25,000 turtle riders to get to you first. She, why, is she here? why is she here? No. Oh, but, to get to me? Oh, yeah. She didn't think yeah. I'd blow her up like this, but bitch, nope. I did. Yeah. You think this is fun and games, bitch? Yeah. You can cry and pretend to be a victim all you want, but guess what? Kate's not going to save you. It's not going to help you. Like, there's nothing she can do. So, deal with the consequences. What comes next? Have you thought about uh, some extra land to fit Shamonica? Shamonica. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I'm waiting for the free my boy hashtags. Go to Didi Delgado's page. Have you seen on Didi Delgado's page? Oh, yeah. Donate. Yeah. Donate. Feed they're those children. All, feed the ones she just popped out. Feed it. Yep. Yep. Feed them and, and, and give money. And they're all saying she's innocent. I saw some oh, yeah. of those ridiculous things on there for that. Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if Dee Dee dimed her out and is now turning around being like, oh, pray for my girl. Pray for her. I would. Yes. That's a totally a Dee Dee thing to do. Totally. Absolutely. Let me uh, pull up. A guy's got, um, I got a uh, couple donos here. Want to go over? Uh, you guys have been very generous tonight. Thank you very much. $25 for says from M job for the uh so he's, he's writing free my boy hashtags to start. Yeah. My boy free my boy MCG. Um for the independent autopsy of Monica Cannon Grant's career as an activist. Yeah. Uh fifty dollars from Liz says, please tell me how I can get that hat that you are wearing. I've been waiting for today since 2017. I'm so proud of you and your laser focused determination. With this and all the others. Thank you very much. So you can get any hats, guys, in the Turtle Boy store. Deb, I don't know if you can link that in the comments, but you know, we got a lot of hats. I got tons of hats here. DeSantis 2024 hats, TB Live hats, blog that hats. We got I just write the blog hats. You know, you name it. We got tons of hats. So I get different hat every day of the week. I'm a hat guy. Link to the store is in the description. So there, thank you very much, Liz. Help yourself to anything. Uh, $10 from Linda says you absolutely made my day. Well, thank you, Linda. I was very happy, happy young man today. Keep up the Link great work. The comments, though, too. I just put it there for the shop. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and, uh, keep up the great work. Turtle boy. Love your straw. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I like the straw too. Uh, honestly, your haters are giving off bitter baby daddy vibes. It's really weird. I mean, their, their obsession with, me is is just odd talbert swan has her i know uh he's another one i mean all these grifters these talbert swans of the world and this is why i follow you well thank you Rue. i appreciate that um flatch who's flatch you lens well, uh i don't i don't care where that person is so um let's see Unk taking scalps like crazy horse on a warpath. Yeah. Very true. The racist industrial complex is scapegoating poor Monica. Well, she's just the dumb one that got caught. You can still get away with this grift. You can still get away with it. You just can't be so obvious, you know? They got too cocky way too quick. Way so too quick. Way too much money coming in, showing it off, advertising it, and then not doing your taxes. Like, are you exactly. insane? And then buying a fucking house like you couldn't even like what are you doing? Like it's just so obvious. Like you're not gonna get caught. Like that's what happened. She's she she got ghetto rich too quick. People like she's Absolutely. never had she's never had money like this. She doesn't know what to do with it. And she did everything wrong. Everything wrong. Will they take back her award? I want to know when the Celtics, because I love I'm so hot on the Celtics right now, guys. And the Bruins, too, for that matter. But the Celtics are hot right now, man. They're the hottest team in the NBA. They look like a championship caliber team. They stopped doing politics. They've just been playing basketball. It's been great. I've been getting really into the Celtics. I wish they would take that tweet down. 
I wish they would take that whole bullshit back, you know? Oh, yeah. Boston Globe gave her an award, right? They did. Bostonian that, of the that year. Total, that totally syncs with my theory about, like, them being that media entity. Oh, we'll throw you an award, too. Like, that'll be a benefit, right? Like, you do mm -hmm. this for us. We'll, we'll just offer you this reward. That'll help you. Well, it was that woman, Janae Osterholt, or whatever her name was. She wrote it. She she wrote about that story and making her Bostonian in the year in October of 2020, three months after the Rayla video came out. And I tweeted at her. I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Look at look at this video. How can you support this?" She blocked me. That's what I mean. Oh, These no, fake it. news people, you know. Ah. Uh, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Before we call it an call it an evening. Man, you guys have been generous tonight. Thank you. What a great day. I needed Guess this, what? Man. Guess what, Aiden? At the peak, 575 viewers at the peak and over 2,000 views already. Wow. Big night, baby. Big night. This is it. And we, and we don't, I didn't even get to some of the other stories that I wanted to get to. I wanted to talk about that whole freaking acting story. That's a hilarious story. I wanted to get, maybe we'll get her on for the weekend show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I have... I did. I looked into Tay Anderson in Denver, Colorado. So he was accused of uh, sexually assaulting like a bunch of kids, and he's on the school committee in Denver. He's this woke activist, but then the allegations went nowhere. So there was no story I could write about it. But that guy is a real shitbag. Tay Anderson in Denver, Colorado, total shitbag. Did Wanaka watch the night? Oh, you know she did. You know she did, baby. I'll give you a freestyle. Uh, well, they're not really freestyles, Joanna. So I'll give you one Saturday. How about that? Yes, Cherokee girl. Thursday is only Turtle Club now. Yes, that's correct. So feel free to, guys. The, the best way to support the blog is to join Turtle Club. Be simply because you get something out of it. You get the ad free. for um, You get the uh, access to the weekly stream on Thursdays that nobody else gets. And uh, just email me and I'll send you the t-shirt. I still got to send some more t-shirts out this week to people. Um, Suzanne. Suzanne, I I'm emailed her back and I go, what's your address? I need the address. So you gotta, I, I gotta get Suzanne's address. Suzanne has so many names. I know. <laughs> that it's hard to reach her sometimes. I'm like, wait, who? I can get to her anytime. So there's there's a new Suzanne account. Too. Okay. Yeah. Just get me that. And that would be very helpful. Um, okay. So yeah, it's like it's 15 bucks a month and it's just, I mean, look at it as like you're supporting what we do here. And the whole purpose of Turtle Club, guys, is like I don't want to be dependent on advertisers who might get harassed by these trolls who have nothing better to do than to call my daughter's, you know, first grade classroom and, and, and start shit. Like picture what they would do to my advertisers if I had them. Oh, yeah. I can't have advertisers for that reason. So the whole purpose of Turtle Club is to make it like, you know, crowdfunded. But I don't want you to donate. I want you to get something that nobody else is getting. And that's why I created this whole thing. I invested in the platform. And I think it's a pretty good addition to uh, the overall thing. Will she be in the top bunk? Oh, imagine being that. Imagine being her roommate. She will not shut oh. the fuck oh, up. Please. Oh, She's going to demand her own cell and be like, I need I need my space. And oh, I just mm. pregnant. And I'm so stressed out. Forget it. Oh. Uh, okay. Um. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Let's see. All right. Uh, so why don't we, uh, when's Yakimoski back in court? So I'll be going to her court date on April 29th mm -hmm. in, uh, that would be, what the hell is, in Milford. So I, I've been told she's going to plead guilty to that. So she will be a convicted <laughs> felon. So that's just adds to the list of shitty people. And all those guns that. she owns is going to go away. And all those what? All the guns she owns are going to go away. Yeah, she's going to lose her guns. So I doubt she'll go to jail uh, for, you oh, know. Oh, no, yeah, she'll probably phone. be on probation. Yeah, but I'll, I'll take the conviction. The felony conviction is all that matters. You're a Absolutely. convicted felon for the rest of your life. And then the fun starts. Mm -hmm. you, you thought this would be smart, Chrissy? You forget who I am, Chrissy? Like, did, did, did you? You shouldn't. I mean, some of you filthy, disgusting people over there. The, the, some of the ugliest people on earth do over there, like just hideous, big chinned, disgusting people are over there. I just want to point that out. Everybody who doesn't like Turtle Boy is ugly and unfuckable. They all are. That's one thing they have in common. And everybody over here is attractive, beautiful, gorgeous, 
sweet, skinny, everything. nice, stuff like that. We're perfect. Just forget it. Best and brightest. Exactly. Um, wonder if Rollins uh, or any of them are shitting their pants. <sighs> Probably not. I love uh, T. Howie hooked me up with Eddie from Medford. I love love you, T. How? Okay. Um, <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> I don't know, uh, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, all right. Anybody else have any questions? I guess we're not. It's getting kind of late. So thank you guys very much. Holy shit! Four hundred forty-five people here at eleven o'clock. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. Can you send my turtle glove shirt to whoever? Monica Cannon Grant's future cellmate. Oh, I wish. I wish. I wish, man. Oh, the sex cult guy. That's that's the next shirt that comes, like the turtle club. And that's what, you know, uh, the, the deadbeat mom there posted the other day. Can we just, I got to bring this up. I, can, we, can we just end with this? Because if you're not, if we don't get the reference, this is what I was talking about. You got to read. I mean, this is like a fucking obsession like I've never seen. And it's just not. It was supposed to like phase me, but it's just not having the intended effect that they thought it would. Just read it. It's, it's, it yeah. makes anyone laugh. Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah, like this is like peak obsession, like I've never seen before. So, this is a, a YouTube channel uh, run by a woman who uh, has lost half of her kids' to the estate. And this Can is I what. Read she, it? Yes, read it, please. Okay. I'm going to say this once. I love our subscribers. I don't intentionally want to alienate or upset our subscribers. That being said, I was born with a voice. A loud, insistent, sometimes whiny, always screechy, and unapologetic voice. As long as I live and breathe, I will use that voice to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. Sometimes it's the victims of blatant online scams and money grabs. Sometimes it's police officers who are bound by duty to stand pat by passively while they are filmed and verbally abused for the sake of some angry, unemployed felon's Google revenue. And right now, it's the victims of Aiden Kearney's bizarre and toxic alt-right online sex cult. I totally understand it may be redundant to some, if not most, but I'm a fighter. And I'll always fight till the fight is done. Even if I fight alone. <laughs> oh, I love, I love it. I love the sense of self-importance that, oh, I'm so important. I'm such a fighter. Bitch, you lost your kids. This is Nate. You lost half your kids. <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, it's so funny. Bitch, you lost half your kids and you're making me seem like a bad person. And anyone who's like still friends with you, it's like, oh, well, he he's a bad person. He sent uh, pictures of his kids in the tub to himself on Facebook. He's a bad person. Uh, bitch, I didn't lose my kids. So like maybe you should reconsider who you're hanging out with. But of course you can't. You're too stupid. Everybody, you know, who's basically doesn't like me is a fucking idiot. I win. You lose. Look what I did today. Look what you're doing today. Fucking nowhere. I win. I always win. Blow me. Anyway. And if you guys want the sex benefits, you're going to have to subscribe to the $100 a month plan. I already put this on Facebook. Okay. We don't just Ooh. give that out. The $100 tier is for the sex cult benefits. Sex cults. We have this, the toxic. You have the, 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 the $100 online. tier. That's what you get. You got to get something. Like, in addition to Turtle Club streams, you get the weekly Aiden Kama Sutra lesson. Yeah. $100 a month. It's worth it. Yeah. So. There, I mean, you, you know, you must be doing something right when there's literally uh, people who spend their entire day just tweeting about you, you know, posting about you, doing YouTube live streams about you. And I'll tell you what, you guys are going to keep doing it because I own your brain. I own your brain and I'm never going anywhere and I'm not going to stop. And why would you want me to either? That's the other question. It's like, OK, you don't like me, but you agree. Monica Cannon Grant sucks, right? Like we all agree. All you losers who left. Like you followed the blog because the story is like Monica King. Great. I bet you wish you were around today, but you ain't. And you ain't welcome back here. But, uh, you know, why would you want me to stop exposing people like her? If I don't do it, who's going to do it? Exactly. Nobody. So it is what it is. Okay. So I guess uh, it's it's 11 o'clock. So we're going to call it a night, guys. It's 422. Holy shit. What a fucking night. Uh, and we will see you guys all, some of you guys we will see on uh, Thursday for Turtle Club. Other people we will see on Saturday night for the Turtle Boy Live show. Peace, Turtle Riders. Thank you, Deb. Good night, everyone.